am 28 years old. I am 47 years old. I am 28 years old and I found out that I was positive um, with a random physical checkup that I do every six months. The uh, reason for that was at the time, my partner, I was hearing a lot of rumors about him and I don't like to listen to rumors. So what I did was I checked myself. So I went and we sat, we spoke, and she told me, um, yeah, I'm positive with the HIV and I'm shocked. <laughs> Are you sure? I just came six months ago, you know, and uh, I've been positive for roughly six years now, so it's been a struggle. You basically started four years ago, and I could still remember it like yesterday. I was friendly with someone for some years on and off, and uh, I can remember when the person started to get sick. You know, vomiting, diarrhea, no appetite and stuff like that. But HIV or AIDS was the last thing that was on my mind. And I honestly thought it was cancer or something. They had a free testing in the square and I decided to get tested. And after the 10 minutes, um, she told me that I am HIV positive. HIV is a virus. Human immunodeficiency virus is the full name. When we become infected with HIV, um, most times there are no symptoms at all. You don't know that you are infected, you don't feel any different, but over time this virus destroys the immune system. I remember a day he came out the doctor office looking amazed and he never said anything to me but he hold the mean and everything changed. Even at that time I still wasn't thinking about HIV or AIDS and uh, started losing weight drastically and uh, he was admitted to the hospital some months after and I remember exactly two weeks after he was admitted to the hospital and I went there I got a message from him the night before and by the time I respond I didn't get any reply back on the first time finding out um, not knowing where to turn where to go where to turn who to talk to Thank God, uh, I believe in a higher power and that's God. And I prayed, cried and prayed. Um, and say, you came into the world pure and now you're fighting for time basically. Um, my young mother at the time, two beautiful children. It was really hard and to look at them in their face each and every day knowing that yeah, someday they will know of this, they will know of what the world is like and somebody can just do something like that to an innocent person is heartbreaking. It breaks my heart. About two days after I did um, the lab works and uh, even though the rapid tests say positive, but I was hoping that the lab tests would come back negative. But then um, it came back as positive, that I'm HIV positive. I didn't say it too bad, because the reason why I say that, because um, the person that I've been with were also tested positive. I never thought that it could have happened to me. While I was outside in the ICU getting ready to go in, the nurse told me to hold on because the doctor was in there. And I heard her talking, you know, so I figured he is finally out of the sedation, you know, and he's doing much better. 
However, when the doctor came out of the room and I was getting ready to go in, the doctor said, Do you have his girlfriend, right? And I said, Yes. And the doctor was like, Well, uh, I can't tell you what was wrong, but you know, he passed away, right? Immediately, I felt the shock, hurt, sad, started crying and stuff. And the doctor was like, I can't tell you what was wrong with him because you're not his wife, but I know you've been here, but you should speak to his mother. And uh, you should go and get tested. I confronted the person. And there was never a direct answer. There was always a detoured answer. So that's what why I said, let me look after me. I went on that test uh, the next working day. While waiting at the doctor's office, he was taking so long and I just wanted to know what was going on. So I went to a clinic and uh, I spoke to a nurse there and she did a rapid testing and uh, I was really waiting for the results, she was waiting. And then I started seeing her pull out a draw to fill a form, which was the form to draw the blood and send it to be tested. And she told me, I started crying, um, I was shaking, I was thinking about my children. I thought I was going to die the next day. <laughs> We are told that the information about HIV is there, you, but people are not fully educated about it until something happens. And immediately I wanted to just kill myself, you know? When I found out um, about my HIV status, I decided not to disclose my status to anyone, not even my best friend, my family, my close siblings, because of the discrimination. Because um, some persons are not educated about HIV AIDS, I decide to keep it discreet for the time being. With this virus in your body destroying your immune system, you then get exposed to more serious diseases. And at a certain point when your immune system starts to fail, in the past we call this AIDS. AIDS stands for the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. The rate at which one advances from becoming infected and advancing to get um, more advanced disease or AIDS um, depends really on several factors. One of them being the state of your immune system at the start. So obviously, if you are someone who was ill with another illness and you become infected with HIV, it is more likely to rapidly advance. Um, it also depends on how much of the virus you got exposed with and the strain of the virus that you got exposed with. So there's no set time that you can say, I got infected today and I became ill um, in X amount of time. We do know that it does take about six weeks for an immune response to HIV to take place. And for that reason, um, if someone says, I think I may have become infected last night, we usually say, okay, we'll test you today, but we'd like you to come back and be tested in another six to eight weeks so that we can make sure that any antibody that has appeared to this virus is, is then present and able to be tested. Well, that being said, um... I meet my partner up today and we've been together since I've known, so since I've known, they have known and we have been living together and it's been rough, it's been easy, it's been rough, um, however, but that's my support system and has been my support system ever since. I did not tell anyone until maybe two to three years after. 
my close relatives, as well as um, some close friends I'd known at the time, but mostly family members was really hard to tell and hard to break the news. So, you know, there's still always this feeling of like you're going to die. <laughs> I remember I tried killing myself one time and before I thought of that I said I'd have to kill my children too because nobody could raise them better than I can and to leave them here to suffer or for somebody else to pick up the burden it would be unfair. When I was about to do it something snapped. I don't know what exactly, and it was that moment that I decided to just live. So the virus HIV um, invades the human body through many mechanisms. It, it goes into the bloodstream, and it goes and lives in certain cells in the bloodstream, and in those cells, it destroys the cell, and it makes the cell begin to produce the HIV as if it's a good thing. So you basically trick your body into producing what should be healthy cells, um, but you're in fact producing more HIV virus. We, we measure how your body is responding to HIV by looking at particular cells of the immune system, which we call CD4 cells. Um, and these are things that we can measure, and it is one of the ways in which we monitor people with HIV to see how their immune system is responding to treatment or to the advancing virus. I don't see the HIV virus. I learned to cope and take my medication consistently. I work, I go to work every day, but going forward, um, I have to maintain eating healthy and uh, talking, you know, talking to the younger folks about if this is ha if they decided to have sex, use protection. My aunt, I had who heard me, I told her and you know she started trying to encourage me and she even phoned me and she was telling me about one of my aunt who has a friend found out in her early 30s that she was HIV positive and she's still alive and it's been over 30 years. And um, that kind of brought um, a little ease to my mind that day. They, they do support now, they support, they try to make sure I'm taking my meds, they remind me every day that I'm loved, uh, how much my children need me, and I'm grateful for that. I'm also grateful for the friends that I have, the real ones, the true ones. They have really been there, they've been pushing me through trying to get me back into that momentum, but mentally it, it left a traumatic star. However, um, the sun still shines even in storms, and my sunshine came. I found out after being uh, consistent with my meds, and I was in compliance at first, and I worked, my doctor really, really worked with me. It was shocking when I found out that I was like, I'm pregnant. I'm like, what? You never thought you could have been pregnant and having a baby in this manner. And don't get me wrong, it's a joyous moment, but for first time persons like myself who have to go through that process, it was a bit scary. But um, the medication that they have now, it really helps and it does not transmit or transfer to the kids that I'm very long I'm very very happy because then my child gets to live a normal carefree life. Unfortunately there is no cure for HIV. Um, it is now considered to be a chronic disease. Um, what does it what does this mean? This means that 
like many chronic diseases, others like diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, we don't have a cure, but we are able now to manage it so that persons infected with HIV live normal, long, healthy lives and die of other causes. I remember when I first started taking the medication and by a couple, couple hours after I started feeling dizzy, my head started hurting me, I felt nauseous like I wanted to vomit. It was then I understood that these were the side effects from the medication. There are two labs we do every three months, the CD4 count and the viral load. You will hear the terms viral load and CD4 count. Viral load is actually the measure of the number of copies of the virus circulating in the blood. And it is the, our goal in treating HIV is to have an undetectable viral load. In the ideal world, we would love to say you have zero virus. I guess that's what we'll be saying if we get a cure, that there is zero virus. Currently, the technologies that exist for measuring copies of virus can measure up to about 20 copies per mil. So that means that if you have less than 20 copies, you are considered undetectable. And that is our treatment goal. The CD4 is the immune cell that we measure to see how well our immune system is going. And so someone with HIV, if I do a follow-up blood test, I want to see their CD4 increasing and their viral load decreasing to undetectable. My viral load has been undetected for some years now, which means that you cannot transmit the disease to someone else. I decided um, that I want to tell my story because uh, I want people out there to know that HIV, you cannot contract HIV by touching, hugging, or even kissing, and sharing utensils, sharing the bathroom. I also decided um, to tell my story because um, some persons, uh, they are still not educated about the HIV virus, so you would always find that there will be discrimination um, towards other persons who are HIV positive, so I am here to let them know that there's no need to for discrimination. Yeah, it's been really, really challenging, but I will encourage each and every person you can be young because young people can get it. Um, be old, you can be just on the urge of exploring life and leaving school. Trust yourself more and your instincts. Make that choice to get a checkup like I did and find out, as well as gain more knowledge about it. Learn via media. There's a lot of information on the media, social media, or as well as websites, as well as groups that we have here in St. Kitts, I really wish that we, as a society, can be more acceptant about it. We treat it like it's something from also another world, and it's not that actually, it's just a medical condition that anyone has who's living like with diabetes or hypertension. Even if persons who are cancer related, they can also understand. It's still something that you struggle with. But if you do maintain your medication, making that healthy lifestyle choice, eating right, exercising daily, and spending time with those that you love, your loved ones, your friends, and even those that elevate you inside, it really helps on the outside. Educating the public is um, important to me because um, I know there are persons like myself who wants to come out and not hide behind a shadow. So it is important to me. A lot of people feel like HIV is such a, is the worst thing. But I think it takes a lot of mental strength and you have to be willing in yourself to push through 
and decide that you want to live. I can understand why people start taking the medication and stop because who wants to take a medication every day until you die? Early up in this year, when I went back for my results from one time, it wasn't undetected. And she told me to come back and do another test because sometimes these things happen. Sometimes they up and down. It's like, you see like when you have mosquitoes in a house and you flit, once you open back the door, as much start to fly in as possible, it's like that with HIV. From the minute you start to drop back on your medication or the minute you miss a day or two, is let the door open a bit and they use that opportunity to rush in and start breathing in your system and that is what happened. Even though HIV sometimes is hard to live with, for me, it is not the hardest battle that I fight on a daily basis, but because I discipline with my medication, I am not as worried and I don't feel ashamed of it. I would like the stigma here to change even if it's by a small percentage. From day one, HIV has been shrouded in mystery and, and rumor and anxiety, really because I think of how it first presented on the world scene. And so a lot of those things, although those of us who know better and have learned over the years have realized a nonsense a lot of those things have stayed along and it has led to a lot of anxiety for people living with hiv hiv is a disease like any other disease and like any other disease caused by a virus i would think the main thing is that only certain people can get hiv is the biggest misconception that there is hiv is a virus once the virus gets into your body, you become infected with HIV. How does this virus get into the body? Well, the most common way in which HIV gets into the human body is through sexual intercourse. And there are very few of us, certainly adults, who are not having sex. So it has always amazed me that we think that HIV is this weird and wonderful thing that only some people get. Any adult human or any human I should say because there are children who are engaged in sexual activity but anybody who is having unprotected sexual activity is at risk for HIV. Once the virus is out there you can become infected. The key therefore is to know if the person you're having sexual intercourse with is infected. The key is to know if you are infected yourself so that you can make different choices and of course the, the best tool we have is to not have unprotected sex, which means that we're going to have to use condoms at every sexual encounter. Another myth that I, I came across over the past 34 years is that bad people get HIV, that HIV is a punishment. And we've had a long struggle with this coming from members of churches, um, you know, often born out of fear and born out of ignorance. I think by now we have such a wide knowledge base, this should be really um, debunked, but you can get HIV at one encounter. And it's not, it's nothing to do with somebody who is promiscuous or who has multiple sexual partners. Um, yes, if you have multiple sexual partners, that increases your, your exposure to potentially having HIV. But you can have never had sex before, have one sexual partner on your wedding night after getting married to the love of your life, who of course may have had sex before, and become HIV infected because neither of you thought you, you to be tested before. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, I think if we get away from those judgment things, life would be a lot easier for everyone. If we just look at the, the, the science of it, it is a virus, it is transmitted from human to human, predominantly through sexual intercourse in our setting. In other places, it is through um, sharing needles, through blood transfusions that have not been screened. I remember my first ever HIV patient 
was an eight-year-old boy who had a disease where he lacked a particular clotting factor. He was a hemophiliac. And in those days, they were collecting blood from donations and they would spin it and get this factor out of it to give to him to help him to clot. And this little boy got HIV. Um, and perhaps my whole approach to HIV has been because my introduction to it was an eight-year-old boy who was receiving treatment to save his life and was infected with the virus through transmission. He was infected because he used to have to have an injection every month of factor, of this factor, the a clotting factor. And um, the, they, they were not testing the blood from which they were getting his, um, his, his blood. I mean, here we've been very lucky because our blood bank is small. And even before we had HIV tests available, before I even came to St. Kitts, um, you, you were testing for things like hepatitis and other blood-borne viruses. So, and those you would screen out. So now all blood that comes into the blood bank is tested before it is given to another human being. So why I decided to tell my story is um, many reasons, but it's time. That's the biggest reason, it's time. Thank you, and enough time has passed. And um, somebody out there may need to hear this or may need to know what's going on. We might think that all is well by a nice smile or, you know, a nice greet. But no, actually, we need to keep check. You know, it's not everything our parents would tell us, not everything school would tell us, it's not everything we would learn. And for the sake of my kids and other children and other persons, you know, it's really important that everyone knows whether you're four years old or 45 years old, you have the right to know. Um, basically, that, that really encouraged me as well as um, I listen to my story animated all the time. So it also gave me that courage to come out and speak up because you do hear other people's story and it's very inter interesting actually. So that gave me the reason and the urge to come and share my story. To persons who work in the health ministry, who knows about my HIV status, and I feel comfortable talking to those two persons beside my doctor. So when I'm feeling down or depressed, I can call any one of them and let them know how I feel. Or if I feel like not taking the medication anymore, I will call or text and let them know that I don't feel like taking the medication anymore, I just want to give up. And then they will tell me, they will try and comfort me and, you know, let me know that if I get off the medication, I will advance the AIDS and then I will die. If somebody is, has just been recently tested with HIV and then they see somebody else that they know or they're talking to somebody else who they know have HIV, I think that is motivation alone for them to fight. I just like to encourage people, you know, um, and every time I share my story with somebody that will make me feel less than even some certain person who I wouldn't have expected to take it as they did. They always been positive towards me, you know, and with regards to my family, a few family members know, and that's about it. A lot of people I communicate with know, because like I said, I tell people all the time, I'm not afraid or ashamed to talk about it. And if me admitting that I have HIV and talking about it makes you feel uncomfortable, then that is on you. That is a you problem, not a me problem. And what I would like to say is, you can't trust anybody. Um, they 
pass before they communicated this information to me and with regards to relationships um romantic relationships others that affected my life it's just that i have to always use a condom whenever i want to engage in sexual relations and um i always be upfront with the person that hey um this is my story and if anything ever happen between us we'll have definitely have to use a condom and all these things and all these things i communicated and i can sit here confidently knowing that i have not transmitted hiv to anyone i have not passed it on to anyone and when i was friendly with the person that passed we were we were great friends we talked about anything everything so the fact that this person couldn't communicate this information for me i think if he had told me knowing the person that i am i don't think i would have leave him um maybe we would have ended the relationship but i would have encouraged him and helped him to fight and we would have fight together and i told my mother and she said how oh, you let this happen you had to protect yourself because nobody is going to protect you for you so you have to do it for you So HIV testing is available in all labs in St. Kitts and Nevis. The private labs, they ha their prices range from about $95 to $115 to do an HIV test. This is because they have individual kits, so they open a kit to do your test when you come and ask for a test. And at the current time, the Ministry of Health does not charge for an HIV test done in the hospital and, and clinic setting. So you can have a free test done through the health centers or the hospitals, or you can have a privately done tests for about 100 EC dollars. HIV is one of those diseases, there is a virus in the bodies of people living with HIV that wants to destroy the immune system. We have medication now that helps the immune system fight and destroys as much of the virus as it can. And once you're taking those medications, your immune system will be fine. If you stop the medication, the virus says, wait a minute, there's no more, nothing preventing me from multiplying. It multiplies and it does what it was created to do, which is to destroy the immune system and you will die of AIDS. You have to protect yourself for you because everybody at the end of the day is just you and everything else in the world all you have is you at the end of the day and you may have people there to support you and so but only you know you and only you have you and you have to protect yourself no matter what you can never be stressed enough you must protect yourself do regular checks because you may be um tom may be the only one you're having sex with but how sure are you that you are the only one tom is having sex with the challenges of living with hiv i think again go back to the history of hiv um first of all we we have this dichotomy of, of emotions when it comes to sex we are a highly sexual population in the Caribbean. Just look at our music, just look at the way we dance, just look at the way we dress, just look at the way we move. And yet, we go, shock horror, I've got a sexually transmitted infection. And I find it fascinating, you know, to see our response. Now, had HIV been COVID, where you could get it by inhaling the breath of someone standing next to you on the bus, um, that would have been different. And yet here was a, a virus that was transmitted in the most intimate of acts between persons. And it sent the region into a panic because suddenly no one, you know, wanted anyone to know that they were having sex. 
And, and that fascinated me because we were having the babies. And so I could never understand what this big panic was about. On the other hand, HIV was brought to our attention really after the explosion in North America. And in the North American picture in the, in the early 80s and in and European picture, HIV presented in a particular group of the population who were at that time engaged in a lot of multiple sexual encounters. Very much like, you know, let's just look at what's about to happen at music festival or at carnival, um, where people relax and a lot of people are engaged in, in this kind of um, you know, making choices that perhaps not be, may, may not be so great for them. And so in the early 80s, in North America and in Europe, a lot of the persons who were having multiple sexual partners were members of the gay community. And that then meant that initially, in the journey of HIV, um, a lot of stigma and discrimination um, centered around the fact that this disease was occurring in those persons who were doing things that the rest of us weren't doing. We came into our populations, which although also seen predominantly in the gay population, we also saw it in the heterosexual population in the Caribbean because um, of these taboos. Um, because, you know, culturally we have all these taboos, a lot of people were living lives that on the surface said one thing, but on the down low were saying something else. And they would then um, oscillate between their life of men having sex with men and then coming to the surface in the light and having sex with their female partners um, because that's what the society wanted to see. And that meant that there was a lot, of, many, many years went by when everything had to be so hard, had to, you had to be hiding and you, you know, so many young people lost their lives because they couldn't say, look, I have HIV. What I want to share uh, with, the per with the public, persons out there who are living their lives carelessly, um, you have to think about your life. Think about the consequences. Don't think about it after. Because um, HIV is a virus that you will have to live with for the rest of your life. So I encourage you out there to be careful if you're going to have sexual intercourse with anyone. Be always use protection. Even if the other person doesn't want to, still insist that you all have to use protection. If you're just finding out, or if you have known for a long time, only you have known for a long time, and you're ready to move on to say, I will say, but not everyone believes in God, but I believe, I strongly believe in him. I see him every day and I see all his work. Just don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give in to that voice that says you're not worth it or you're not worthy or why should you even? You know, you may know what your why should you even be, but why should you? Like, you should actually. Like, you should not just stay there and move and in this depressed state or emotion because it's not what is intended for us from the beginning. You know, we are to be free. And freedom is liberty. Liberty is knowledge. And knowledge is power. So today, I choose to be free just being here, you know? And every day is a struggle for freedom. It's like slavery days are over again, to be honest. But you have to choose to be free. You have to want that freedom, that earn for it. Because I have been low. And low is literally a cliff that has 
pulse cold water rushing with strong waves in it and sharp edged stones and rocks at the bottom. I've been there. So climbing back out, it says something. It says, yes, I've overcame that and I'm also overcoming everything else that is coming my way. So to stand firm and to stay strong and to be mentally fit is a key and it's very important. Now you will know what your mental key is. You will also know what is that mental breaking point. I say choose to have the key. Keys open doors, doors to whatever reality that you may have in your mind, whatever dream that you have, whatever it is that may be in you, that fire that is not yet out. Tap into that source. Hold on to that source and just push with all your might through it. That is your torch through life because if that torch is out, then you let the darkness win. We still have persons who live in ignorance and live in darkness and they are not willing to understand that um, it is not the same picture, that you, you can live a normal, healthy life. And yes, so someone made a choice that put them at risk, but how many of us do that all the time? Um, you know, we take risks all the time, sometimes knowingly and sometimes unknowingly. Yes, something you have done in your life may have contributed to it, but why, why does that require judgment? Um, why does that require that you treat me differently? I am not a risk to you. Someone living with HIV is a risk to you if you allow them to have unprotected sex with you. And note how I've said that. It's still your choice to determine if someone, if you allow someone to have unprotected sex with you, it's your choice. You have to accept, each of us has to accept responsibility for the choices we make um, with very few exceptions. And, and those exceptions are in cases of sexual assault, obviously. If someone is raped, well, their, their choice is being removed, and that's a completely different scenario. But for the rest of us, we choose every day who we spend time with. We choose what questions we ask them, what not to ask them. We choose whether to allow them to be intimate with us with or without condoms. And therefore, we choose. Um, one of the questions I ask a lot of young people now is, um, do you love this woman enough to die for her? Do you love this man enough to die for him? And if you say yes, I can't argue with that. If you say no, then I recommend condom use. I have a friend who lives that way, that they're young and, you know, they want to be free and all these things. And every chance I get, I tell my story. I say, remember the day when we found out that I was HIV positive, you remember how traumatizing it is. And what I survived may kill you. Nothing is wrong with being young and having fun. But there is a way, way to have fun. There's a responsible way to have fun. And sex is fun. But do it responsibly and protect yourself. Do it for nobody to show up to protect you. You know, we don't hear a lot about HIV these days. Um, in, the, in the previous years, there were big campaigns. I mean, I myself wore a red ribbon for about 20 years of my life to raise awareness to people living with HIV. Um, these campaigns have faded away with, with the one, the advent of other more pressing um, health concerns. And, um, and also the funding. A lot of the international funding was what drove a lot of our programs in the region. Um, and without the funding, a lot of governments, um, when they had to juggle what they had to pay for, said, you know what, we've spent enough money on HIV, let's look at chronic non-communicable diseases like heart disease, which are now our currently our number one killers. Um, so it worries me a little bit that we have gone from 
you know, intense awareness campaigns to zero. I would have loved some level of HIV awareness continuing um, in the schools because new generations are having sex. And new generations, when I meet a young person who says, yeah, I've heard about HIV, but you know, it has nothing to do with me, it blows my mind. I feel, gosh, you know, your whole lifetime of, of trying to engage people in, in taking responsibility has just gone into nothingness. So it concerns me a little bit that we're not as aware, it seems to me, as aware of it. It could be that I'm wrong and that we're all so aware of it and we just look, do it looking after ourselves. Why I know that's not the case is that we are still getting new cases of HIV. I think I am a firm believer in teaching young people from an early age how to be responsible for their actions. And we have to explain that every action, every decision you take, has a consequence. It has a good consequence or a bad consequence. And as you grow, you learn to balance these options and you make choices. And those choices may have an outcome that is unpleasant. I, I don't think this means that you therefore treat persons differently, um, but you have to accept. Th they have a condition that they may or may not have contributed to, and we have to do everything in our power to empower them to make better choices going forward. The treatment of HIV has, you know, um, revolutionized the lives of millions of people around the world. My first HIV patient in, in St. Kitts was in 1989 and we had no treatment for them. So what we did then was that we supported them as much as we could. If they had an infection, we treated the infection. If they were dehydrated, we gave them rehydration. And you basically gave palliative care until the virus ravaged their body and they eventually died of AIDS. Now, with the advent of this group of, of antiretroviral medications, ART, A-R-T, um, we are able to destroy the virus and boost the immune system. So all antiretroviral medications that are available now um, have two goals. Some of them destroy the virus and some of them boost your immune system. And so we give them as a cocktail. We give them as a mixture of drugs. And in the beginning, when these cocktails were first developed, they were, they were patients of mine who were taking 23 tablets a day. And it was exceptionally expensive. I, I vividly remember my salary at the time. And had I been infected with HIV at the time and had to buy my medication, I would have had $218 a month to live on because my whole salary would have gone in purchasing these drugs. Right now, HIV care in St. Kitts, the antiretroviral medications are not costed to the patient. So the, the government buys the drug and the HIV patient has access to these medications free of charge at the current time. And the good thing is that the medications are now so um, efficient that we're now down to, in some cases, one pill a day. So it's almost like taking a vitamin supplement. And it has made life a lot easier. It has made compliance with taking medication a lot easier. Um, I know how many of us don't even remember to take a multivitamin every day, but if you're living with HIV and you understand the disease and you understand that this treatment is literally, literally life-saving, then you find a way to remind yourself, look, I've got to take my, my pill every day. And this has made the difference between life and death. I encourage everyone to be more, to be responsible and just be safe. Be careful persons like um, those who are in college, the high schools, you know, I plead to you, just be careful. Be careful because, like I said before, once you contract the HIV virus, you will have to live with it for the rest of your life. I hope that 
the story reaches near and far and two persons who recently find out they are found out they were HIV positive. If you want somebody to talk to, ask the doctor. I would like to help people who feel like this is it and who feel like giving up. Every day I feel like giving up, but it's not because HIV. It's when you don't keep me down and I don't want you to feel like it's HIV gonna keep you down. I don't want you to like keep you down. And to those persons who has never taken a test, go and get tested. Just go and get tested. Because a lot of people watch people with HIV in a negative light and they don't even know about themselves. And when they find out, it's too late. The dead gone left people who had it long time and fighting. And they could have been on that journey fighting for themselves. Just continue to fight. There's much more in life than being diagnosed with HIV. Take it from me. It has never stopped me from getting any job. You just have to decide to live, decide to take care of yourself, decide to protect yourself. And if the result at the end of the day you are positive, continue to fight and I hope someday you get to reach to me and I can encourage you and we can fight together. I would just like to thank the Almighty God for strength every day and spirit life to be here every day and uh, everyone who has supported me on this journey you know i appreciate them to the fullest and i always hope that they take my words i take my story and uh, don't repeat it because i live in it for me and them so they shouldn't have to be going through it either two of us Two of us on the same team. But two of us have to be going through the same thing. No, I'm doing it for all of us. So don't walk in my footsteps. Be better, be wiser. Be more conscious and protect yourself. Because nobody can protect you for you. Forgive. We say live, laugh, and love. But we also forget to say forgive. Forgiveness is not for Paul and Saul, everyone else. It's for us. It's for you. It's for me. It's mine. It's personal. It's personal. Just forgive, forgive yourself. Whatever, whatever it is, whatever mistake, known, unknowingly, you forgive. I think, and I say that we all should be in this fight together. We all should stand together. We all should have that power where we can just have normal lives because we have normal lives like everyone else. We have normal lives. It's just that in our normal lives, we have to take a pill. <laughs> and that pill is called survival. So let's survive. Let's keep it going because we can live longer. We can live as up to a hundred years old if we want to, but it's up to you and the choice is yours.